Okay, we have one last story, Larry, from Tales of the Hawk. This one is by Rhea, who is 13, and she wrote us Spotter, the tale of a heroic hawk. All right, Red Wing Scouts, remember what we learned yesterday? Always keep the safety whistle in your backpack at all. Hey there, Harold, yells about a bird from outside the class. All the scouts see a big, strong Harris hawk flying faster than they've ever seen before. Hello, Spotter, hollers back the teacher. Do you know him, Mr. Harold? asks the smallest hawk in the class, Kiwi. Harold laughs and nods. Whoa, I want to be just like him when I grow up, says Kiwi, eyes still locked on the big bird outside as it flies faster and faster. Just then another scout, Roger, rolls on his back with laughter. The rest of the class joins him. You can't be like him. You're so small and he's a hero, Roger says, still chuckling. Harold moves from his spot and settles the class down. Let me tell you all a story. One about that bird you see right there, Harold says, pointing to the window. Spotter stood in front of his mirror, straightening his hat and slinging on his bag. To his surprise, he heard loud flapping and behind him, his big brother stood outside, smiling wide and bright as usual. But this time, something was different. The big golden badge pinned onto him and the gold band on his wing told Spotter that his big brother had gotten the new job and had moved up to the chief general. Spotter looked down at his own red pin, reminding himself he was still only a captain. Hey Harold, or should I say General Harold, Spotter said, proud of his brother, but feeling smaller than ever. I'm still big brother Harold to you, Spotter, Harold says, laying a strong hand on his shoulder. Together, they stood in front of the mirror, but all Spotter could see was that he was still so small when his brother was becoming a brave hero. Harold saw that Spotter was feeling sad and said, you don't have to be big and mighty to be a hero, Spotter. You just have to be kind and believe in yourself like I believe in you. Spotter smiles, but points to the family tree on one of the walls of his house. You don't understand, Harold. Everyone in our family has been a hero. Everyone except me, Spotter said. You are a hero, Spotter. You just have to, I know, I know, believe in myself. I will, Spotter said, now smiling too. Remember why mom named you Spotter? Because you have amazing eyes and you can sense danger near or far. Just keep an eye out for anyone who needs help and lend them a wing. The rest will follow, Harold said, giving him a supportive smile and a pat on the back. You're right. I can do this. Thanks, Harold. Enjoy your first day as general, Spotter said with new courage and belief. I will, Spotter. And don't forget, I believe in you, Harold said. And with that, he flew out of the treehouse and into the air. Spotter took one last peek at the family tree and promised himself that he would become a hero and be on it too. He flew out of his home and ripped through the air to the Woodland Park, where he did his patrol in the community every day. It was particularly sunny today, and looking down, Spotter could see there were lots of people in the park. It was hardly a moment before Spotter heard the shouts of girl nearby. Without a moment's delay, Spotter dove down to find who was in need of help. Immediately, he saw it. The girl was on a bench trying to enjoy her popcorn and the pesky pigeons were out to attack her. Spotter could hear her useless attempts to shoo them away, but they kept coming back. Go away, shoo, Spotter yelled, but the pigeons paid no mind. Spotter flew down low closer to the bench, which scared the pigeons away. But only a second later, they came right back. Spotter had had enough. He was not going to let some crazy pigeons destroy the girl's day in the park. He swooped even lower one more time, even hooting a loud call, only to see that the pigeons had grouped back to the girl once more. What could he do? He was no hero. Just then he heard another call for help. This time the cry of a little boy. Spotter flew higher into the sky and tracked the sound until he flew, found the boy with his parents under a tall tree. We have to go home, Liam. It's almost time to go. I know how much you wanted to play with it, but we can't get the frisbee down. It's too high for us to reach, Spotter heard the dad tell the boy. Spotter could see the bright red frisbee from where he was flying, but it stuck in a tangle of branches. Again, he heard the call of the girl at the bench. He needed a plan. With a loud whistle and a hoot, he called in his soldiers, the Red Wings. Over the tall trees from the woods, he could see his group of Red Wings fly over to him. Follow me, Red Wings, we have people to save, Spotter shouts to his team. 
Spotter led his team to the girl at lightning speed, then took a dive toward the flock of pigeons up in the girl. With his talents, he picked up one of the pigeons and soared into the sky again. The Red Wings followed, doing just the same as him. Spotter and his team set the pigeons far from the girl and the part of the park where there were bird feeders galore. But they weren't done yet. They still had the boy to save. From the corner of his eye, Spotter could see the boy was starting to leave, picking up his other toys one by one. His day at the park would end all too soon, and his day would be ruined. Not taking even a moment of rest, Spotter led the way to the tree, where the bright red frisbee was still tangled. He landed on the branch with perfect balance and began to use his sharp and strong beak to pull the frisbee free. But it was no use. It was still stuck tight in between all the crazy branches. Once more, he called the Red Wings to his side, and they pulled the frisbee until it was finally free and fell down, down, down to the green grass below. In an instant, Spotter flew down after it and caught the frisbee in the air. Holding it tight in his beak, he flew it to the boy and his parents and tossed it in front of him. Spotter was tired. It was a lot of action for one day. He flew back up to the tree where he freed the frisbee and sat nestled up in a bunch of leaves but he hardly took a breath before he could hear loud noises from below. Another person needed his help already? It was getting late, but the day was still bright. Spotter still thought his eyes were playing tricks on him. Down below, people were clapping for him. Liam, the little boy, and the girl with the popcorn were in front of the crowd, but there were lots of people from around the park all applauding for him. From behind, Spotter heard flaps of wings, and Harold stood on the branch behind him. You are a hero, Spotter. See? You are small and tiny, and you may not be mighty, but you are strong in your heart, and you believe in yourself. Look at how happy they all are, Harold said, proud of his little brother. Spotter looked down at the crowd and was proud of himself, too, happy to have saved the children's day at the park. Well, Mr. Harold, so you mean I can be a hero too, even if I'm small and tiny and not all that mighty? Kiwi asked, now eager to be just like Spotter. Yes, Harold said to her in the class. Anyone can be a hero if they are strong in the heart and believe in themselves. The end. You seem to really enjoy that story, Larry, and we enjoyed all the stories we got to read. So thank you so much to everyone who sent out their stories and have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys.